Hello and welcome to Global Eye with me, Parikshit Lutra. The India-China standoff at the line of actual control has been on for close to four months now. Top military officials and diplomats have held several rounds of talks since the 15th of June when Indian and Chinese troops had the worst clash in over four decades. 20 Indian soldiers were killed and Chinese troops also suffered casualties. India has emphasized on the need for a diplomatic solution and the Ministry of External Affairs has said that complete disengagement requires redeployment of troops by each side towards their regular posts on their respective sides of the line of actual control. India has been stressing on the need for reciprocal action as well. However, Chinese troops have so far refused to pull back from Pangong So and Gogra Post as well. The disengagement negotiations are complex and unlikely to stretch till December. Joining us now to talk about the status of negotiations and the way forward for India-China ties is China's ambassador to India, Sun Widong. Ambassador, thank you so much for speaking to CNBC TV 18. Our first question now, China-India relations are at a turning point. What do you feel about the reset that is underway and what will be the impact on the future of the partnership? Well, uh, first I may say that uh, you are using the right word, that the part partnership uh, is exactly the basic orientation of our bilateral uh, relations. Well, China's basic judgment on China-India relations remains unchanged. Uh, China and India's, India are partners rather than rivals to each other and opportunities rather than threats. It's an important consensus reached by the leaders of our two countries and should be earnestly implemented. And it would be a miscalculation to treat a close neighbor for thousands of years as enemy or threat only by one issue or one incident. We should respect and support each other, avoid suspicion and misunderstanding, and enhance political mutual trust. Um, another important consensus agreed by our two leaders is to properly handle differences and not allow them to become disputes. We should put the boundary question at an appropriate place in our bilateral relations and not allow differences to disturb the relationship. Any action that enlarges and complicates the contradiction will not help solve the problem. In fact, dialogue and negotiation is the only right way out. Uh, the basic fact of China and India are the two largest neighboring developing countries remain unchanged. And the orientation of China and India are partners remains unchanged. And the general landscape that China and India are interdependent for common development remains unchanged. Due to these three unchanged, I don't think there is a reset in China-India relations. Our relationship should move forward rather than backward or reverse. And China and India should avoid mutual attrition, nor be opposed to each other. And instead, we should meet halfway to bring our bilateral relationship back on the right track at an early time. Right. Uh since the 15 June clash, India and China have been talking at a military and diplomatic level to resolve tensions. According to Indian officials, disengagement has been stalled due to Chinese troop deployment at Pangong So and Gogra Post, among other areas. Indian officials feel that disengagement may stretch to the winter season and beyond. Will Chinese troops restore the status quo as existed before the 5th of May 2020? Ambassador Sun? Uh, well, uh, when we're talking about the Galavan uh, Valley incident, that is an unfortunate uh, one, and uh, its uh, merit is uh, very clear. Um, the bilateral channels of communications between China and India are open and smooth after the incident. Um, the dialogue and the negotiations have been undergoing all the time. The Chinese State Council and Foreign Minister, Mr. Wang Yi, had telephone conversations with uh, External Affairs Minister, Dr. Jay Shanka, and National 
security advisor and India's special representative, Mr. Dova, respectively. We have held five rounds of COPS commanders meetings and four rounds of meetings of working mechanism for consultation and coordination of China-India border affairs, which is WMCC. And the troops on the ground have maintained communication. We had met almost every week on average since June the 15th. And both sides take it very seriously to address the issue. I think we have an important consensus that is to push forward disengagement and de-escalation through dialogue and negotiations and maintain peace and tranquility in the border areas. The existing situation on the ground is under control on the whole, and there is no fresh standoff between the two forces. Of course, negotiations are in process that takes time, and we should keep the momentum of dialogue and negotiation, further de-escalate the border situation, properly handle the remaining issues, and jointly maintain peace and tranquility along the border areas. Uh, here I must say that China always stands for peaceful settlement of boundary disputes through dialogues and negotiation. And meanwhile, it's the legitimate right of every country to safeguard its own sovereignty and territorial integrity. So it is not the same thing as expansionism. China should not be labeled as expansionist. Both China and India are victims of imperialism and colonialism. So we should work together to oppose hegemonism, power politics, and expansionism. Hmm. Thank you. You know, the, the next question, can India and China work on an early resolution of the boundary question? This has been now debated for several years now. Several rounds of boundary talks have taken place. Do you think it would be possible for the two sides to carry out delineation, demarcation and delimitation of the boundary once and for all? Is China considering any such move? Well, an early resolution of boundary question is the sooner the better. Uh, however, the boundary question is left over from history, which is very complicated and sensitive. It needs patience to resolve. And we should seek a fair, reasonable and mutually acceptable solution through equal consultation and peaceful negotiation. Uh, since the mechanism of special representatives on the boundary question was established in 2003, we have worked out a three-step roadmap that is uh, initially defining political parameters and guiding principles, then followed by the second step, which is negotiating a framework agreement, and then finally completing border demarcation. And in 2005, the first step was accomplished when both sides agreed to make meaningful and mutually acceptable adjustments so as to arrive at a package settlement to the boundary question. And during the informal summit last year in Chennai, our two leaders welcomed the work of the special representatives and urged them to continue their efforts to arrive at a mutually agreed framework. So China has a sincere political will to solve, to resolve the boundary question. We have been committed to actively advancing border talks and formulating roadmap for framework discussions and pushing forward consultations on early harvest. So we hope the Indian side could equally show political will and move forward towards the settlement of the boundary question. Uh, has there been any contact between uh, Prime Minister Modi and President Xi since the border clash? Is a phone conversation or meeting likely in the coming months, Ambassador Sun? Could there be a Mahabalipuram or Wuhan type of summit to guide relations after these recent clashes? Well, the leaders of our two countries play an essential and irreplaceable role in guiding our relationship. So in the recent years, President Xi Jinping and Prime Minister Narendra Modi have met many times, which showcase the significance they attach to our bilateral relations. And in particular, 
during the two informal summits in Wuhan and Chennai, our two leaders held in-depth and candid communication on overarching long-term and strategic issues of global and regional importance, which provided the fundamental guidance and direction for the development of bilateral ties. The current difficulties we are facing in our bilateral relations have even highlighted the importance of transmitting and implementing the leaders' consensus. We cannot get cold feet or even backpedaling in face of temporary difficulties. More efforts need to be taken at working level to transmit and implement the leaders' consensus and translate it into action in order to bring our ties back on track. The Chinese ambassador there saying that the current tensions have made it all the more important for India and China to implement the consensus between Prime Minister Modi and President Xi Jinping, but did not specify if the leaders are likely to talk soon. On that note, we take a short break, but on the other side, we continue our conversation with Ambassador Sun Vidong and talk to him about the economic reset in ties that is underway. <laughs> 